Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and um, in this tutorial, uh, well, this is going to be a continuation of the uh, dynamic connectors tutorials that I've been doing, and in this one, we're going to be looking at the ball and socket and also the um, ragdoll connectors. And the reason I'm doing two is because they're pretty much the same thing. So let's let's just get on with it because this could prove to be quite a long one if I don't stop chatting crap. So okay uh okay i'm gonna get a cylinder doo, 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 doo. let's get it in the next direction that'll do us um and i'm gonna get another one uh that's a cube let's get another cylinder and we'll get that one in the x direction as well and i'm just going to turn on the uh the lines so we can see the actual uh, geometry and um, right let's go up to the simulate menu at the top uh, da, 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 what am I looking for dynamics connector okay so let's lob this connector in between these you don't actually have to do that it's just that um, I like to visualize it because it makes things easier I'm gonna whack that in the middle in fact let's go into our side view just so we can get a bit of a better uh, come on that'll do this is just to demonstrate and let's change this to a the type to a ball and socket and mm, yeah okay that's fine and object a is cylinder one and object b is two uh, object b is cylinder um, okay now um, we want this one here to stay put so on this one I'm going to go to put a simulation tag on it and make it a collider body and on the other one I'm just going to make that a rigid body and if we press play you can see what kind of movement we get from that uh, I've got uh, I think we've got ignore collisions turned on and that's why it's swinging through so this is what the the um, ball and socket does now if I rewind that and go to connector and change it to ragdoll you'll see it's pretty much the same thing, but we've got this cone and that's basically, mm, let's uh, spin the connector around. So it's facing like this. Um, it limits its movement. So if I press play on this, uh, okay. Ooh. Okay, that's very strange. Okay, maybe it's actually the other way around. Sorry, you have to excuse me. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, there you go. You can see that it stops when it gets to its limit of how far it can move. So basically, they're the same thing. They're exactly the same connector, apart from one has got this um, sort of a, a cone radius, and the ball and socket doesn't. And if we turn ignore collisions off, you can see that that stops there and on the ragdoll it will also stop there so they're pretty much the same thing so you get an idea of what these connectors do it's uh, kind of like um, I suppose a, a hip joint um, the ball in the socket so that's what it does so what can we do with this well I'm gonna put together a ragdoll using uh, a combination of um, connectors actually um, connectors we've already covered so uh, the hinge um, I don't think we actually need the cardan at all actually but um yeah so we're probably just going to use a combination of uh, the ragdoll the ball and socket and the hinge so let's uh, let's just get rid of all of that and start again so we need our figure so we can uh, make our ragdoll. So if we go to our primitives and go to figure, there we go, there he is in all his glory. Um, just gonna move him up so he's above the floor. Okay, lovely. And he is uh, still a primitive. So let's press the C button to make him um, an actual poly object now you can see that it's created this hierarchy and uh, we're gonna have to um, rip all of this out I think um, so what have we got here right first of all let's get the upper body 
at the top and let's see what that contains so upper body let's open this up so we've got the head so i want to organize this in order so i'm going to take the head and pull that out so it's at the top and what have we got in there head effector now this is uh an object that um doesn't actually even though it's a poly object if i go to point mode and select points no nope, there's no points to select in fact i'm going to go to my options configure so i can configure my viewport view do, 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 back hud here we go so what do we want um yeah total points total edges total polys yeah that's all turned on that's great um but we've got no information up here whereas if i chose the head and went into poly mode it's telling me i've got a total of 126 head effector total of 34 so maybe it has got uh, some poly numbers in there but we don't need this that's what i'm getting at so let's get rid of that the neck is this object here and the head is this object here so i'm just going to pull the neck out of the hierarchy just so it's on its own there and so now we've got our head and we've got our neck um, boo, 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 boo. um what else do we need Right, let's pull out the left upper arm and the right upper arm and the joint out of upper body because that'll be what's next. That's the that's the thing below here. So I think we're we're pretty pretty safe with that. Yeah, we're all good. So that's good. So I suppose we should get cracking, really. Um so the first thing we're going to need to have a joint between our uh, head and our head and our neck. So we're going to go to simulate, go to dynamics connector. We've got a connector. I'm going to bung it between the head and the neck, and this is going to be a ragdoll. Um, now, where do we want to place it? Now, I'd say the head, the uh, this neck object here is probably a good place to have it sort of pivot round that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lob my connector in the neck, and then select my connector and go to the coordinates tab and just zero that out uh, in everything. In fact, there's a better way that you can do this. Um, if I move this over here like that, you can zero this out by right clicking on this little spinner arrow and it will pop it back. And to, you could do this on, you know, each of these to zero everything out but there's a quicker way if we um shift control you get this little command if we type in psr it says reset psr we can drag that up into our um uh our ui there and that will reset its position scale and rotation so if i shoot this off here and then give it a weird rotation and then just click this button um it will pop it back to its uh, point of reference which which is its parent because you can see it's a child of that so now it's in the right place we can pull that back out and put it in between the head and the neck okay now the cone is pointing the wrong way so let's grab this spinner and rotate it around i'm going to hold shift so it clips uh, snaps to increments of 10 degrees and we'll put it pointing up it's kind of like uh to stop your animal from you know itching scars or whatever but uh yeah so anyway so that's in the right position now if we go to the object tab it's going to need to know what uh the objects are so object a is the head object b is the neck um and the cone radius let's bring that down slightly 55 maybe okay and with the connector um selected if we hit play you'll notice it go red and it's basically saying you know no can do and it's because we haven't got any um information on we haven't got any uh dynamics tags on our object so let's go to the head and whack a rigid body tag see if that helps and you can see it's falling down now okay brilliant okay um 
in fact, it makes me think that this um, should be maybe like this, if we can fall that far. Ah, it's because it's not connected to the other end. So let's leave that at 55, that's fine. Okay, so the neck. Um, if we didn't want it to move, we could add a collider body tag onto it instead of a rigid body tag. Um, and it pretty much does the same thing. So that's fine. Now, what I don't want to do is have to put a load of dynamics tags on every single object. I mean, you, you can do that. But I think a better way to handle this would probably be to uh, go to our create menu, create a null object, and it will create it at world zero, as you can see here. Um, in fact, I'm going to grab everything else as well, not the null, everything else, and then go into this view and just sort of try and get his feet so they're on the floor. So it's basically where our null is, something like that. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is put the head and the uh, connector and neck in our null. And then on our null, we can place a rigid body tag. And on this, I'm going to say that, um, what am I going to say? Well, because we've only got one tag on our null, but we want everything in it to inherit that, we could say apply tag to children, or you could even say individual elements, you know, top levels, well, all really, but I'm just going to say uh, apply tag to children and see what we get. Okay, so the head and neck full, which is what we want. Brilliant. Now it's just going to keep falling forever if it's doing that. So we're going to need a floor. So let's put a floor there. And the floor is also going to need a simulation tag. Now, if you don't want the full, uh, floor to fall, you'd think, oh, you can put a collider body on it. But Cinema 4D is clever enough to know that if you put a rigid body on a floor, you probably don't want the floor to fall away and it won't so there you go there's our head and the neck falling okay right step two then next bit uh upper body is the uh is the next bit so i'm just going to bung that under the neck and we're going to want another um connector in between the neck and the upper upper body um, in fact, I think it's probably best that we name our connectors as well. So we know what's meant to be, uh, you know, we can keep track of what they are, what they're controlling and all the rest of it. So the controller that we just had a minute ago, I'm going to name head to neck. There we go. And then I'm going to create our second collider. Um, in fact, I could just take a copy of the head to neck and put it there in between neck and upper body. And I'm going to name this neck to upper body. Okay. And I'm going to change the type of um, uh, connector to fixed. So it basically just fixes uh, our two objects together. I'm also going to go into this view as well because I think that um, I just want to. You can see that the neck has already got a connector from the from the neck to the head there, and this one I kind of want to put it where the neck and the upper body intersect. So about there. Yeah, that's fine. And then obviously. In this connector because we copied it it's still got the head and neck from the information that I had before but we want the top one to be neck and we want the bottom one to be upper body um so that should do us let's give that a go right so now they're connected brilliant good stuff so we've got the uh beginnings of a ragdoll going on there okay also um just to note, on our rigid body tag, the shape is set to automatic. Um, now I suggest we probably change this to moving mesh. You'll probably get a more accurate, accurate dynamic dynamic simulation going on. 
a bit more calculation because it looks at the whole mesh. It doesn't try to optimize the, uh, optimize the collision shape. Whereas if we change it to moving mesh, it um, evaluates uh, the entire mesh. It doesn't try and optimize the collision shape. It just takes the mesh as the collision shape. So as things get more complicated, you might see a little bit of slowdown, but we're going to bake our dynamics anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so let's get on with it a bit more. Now, the upper body. The upper body obviously goes down to this joint here, but we've also got the left and right arms attached to the upper body. So what I'm going to do is um, let's deal with the left arm first. So I'm going to pull the left arm down to the bottom. I'm going to unfold it and I'm going to drag everything out of it. So let's see what we've got here. So everything under this joint is the left arm. So we've got the left upper arm there. Um, we can leave that named as it is. Um, what's this? Left joint. Okay, so that's actually going to go above this. I'm trying to get the hierarchy order right. So we've got left joint, which I'm going to rename. Left shoulder. And then we've got the left upper arm. Uh, what have we got here? Left joint. That's actually the left elbow. So let's rename that. And we've got the left joint. Um, we've got another effector object, which again doesn't contain anything, so we can actually get rid of that. We've got the left hand, left lower arm. Okay, so the left lower arm should be after the elbow. Elbow, left lower arm, left joint, and that should be left wrist. And left hand. So we're all in order now, by the looks of things. And I think what I'm going to do is um, grab all this. Um, I'm, so select the top one, which is the left shoulder. Left hand, and then press Alt-G, and that'll group everything into this null and then we can rename the null left arm and now we can make this left arm a child of the upper body so now when we select the upper body it's got this left arm connected to it um so i'm going to do exactly the same thing with the right arm so i'm going to take it to the bottom unfold everything drag everything out I'm going to try and be quick about this, guys, because I know it's got to be boring. But, um, yeah, so I'm dragging everything out, um, and let's get everything in order. So that's the right upper arm, right joint. That's actually the shoulder. Put it above that. Rename it right shoulder. Mm. Upper arm, joint. Yeah, that's right. So rename that right elbow. I could cut this out because you've just seen me do it with the other one, but I think, um, you know, you might as, you know, if you're going through with it, might as well, you know, just leave it running. It gives you time to just move along with it. Okay, right hand, lower arm. Okay, so we've got, yeah, so we've got the elbow, then it's the lower arm, and then we've got this right joint, which needs to be the wrist, so we can keep track of everything, and then right hand. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, seems good to me. Okay, brilliant. So then we can select all of this stuff and then Alt-G again, and we can name this right arm. And then we can put that under the uh, upper body. Um, so if we hit play now, Ah, it all explodes, good. And that's because we haven't got any uh, connectors on our arms yet. That's why they're falling apart. So I suppose we should start with our uh, left arm, uh, left shoulder even. And that is going to be a um, another ragdoll. So if we go up to our simulate, dynamics, uh, connector, we'll drag our connector above the left shoulder and we're going to rename this upper body T 
to left shoulder. Okay. And um, do, 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 where is the location of this? I'm just going to drag this under the left shoulder so it's a child of it and then press PSR. And now we're, now we're in the right place. Um, in fact, I'm not going to press PSR because that'll actually match the rotation of this as well. Uh, I'm going to go to coordinates and right click on all the position ones, but not the not the um, rotation one. Then I'm going to drag it out above the left shoulder again. So this is what a hierarchy looks like. Um, in the object tab for that connector, I'm going to change it to ragdoll. And then I'm going to spin this round. I'm going to rotate it in this direction and hold shift so it clips at 90 degrees. So you can see it's all lined up now. So it's facing the body. Okay, um, and I'm also going to adjust the cone radius so it's, I don't know, 70, 70%, something like that. Something like that, there you go. Now it's asking for our object, so that would obviously be our upper body, which is outside of this left arm thing. There we go, upper body, and the next one should be our left shoulder. So now our left shoulder should be connected to our body. There we go, there it is. Great. So the next thing on our, on our, our agenda then is going to be the left shoulder. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to steal this. Um, so select our connector that we just made and hold control and drag it out and put it in between. So now we've got a copy um, and we're going to rename this one left shoulder. Ooh, if I could spell. left shoulder to left upper arm okay and again we want this to be um, well exactly where it is actually so we've got one connector in this position that's attaching the body to the shoulder and then we want another one attaching the shoulder to the, this arm so we're going to leave that right there but we are going to rotate this back around the other way hold shift again snap it 180 degrees that should be fine and uh, I'm going to change the cone radius to something like 55% just to bring it down a little bit um, and we're gonna uh, <clears throat> change what the objects are in this connector. So we need its left shoulder to upper arm. So we, for object A, we need left shoulder. For object B, we need the upper arm. So that's all being changed now. So if we play, we should have the upper arm attached to it. everything now. Yep, there we go. So they're attached. Okay, so it's going well. Next, we need our um, ba -ba 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 -ba. what do we need left upper arm to be attached to the elbow okay so let's grab this and make a copy and put it between left upper arm and left elbow and I'm going to rename this left upper arm to left elbow and like before, uh, well, first of all, we're going to need a different um, kind of connector. Let's center this out to the elbow. So let's make it a child of the elbow and go to coordinates and just center these out. Here we go. So it's smack bang in the middle. Um, we're going to drag that back out again. And we're going to go to the object tab and we're going to make this one a hinge. And we're going to rotate the hinge so it is like this. And again, I'm holding shift to snap. So now you can see that it will hinge this way. So for our hinge, we want the first one to be the left upper arm. And we need the left elbow for the second one. And I'm just going to... 
so our object doesn't just fall I'm actually going to go up to the upper body and put its own tag on it um, I'm going to make that a collider body so nothing falls okay nothing falls now hmm interesting okay well I'm going to take this Ah, oh, I see that's affecting everything under under it okay maybe we can't do that then mm. okay well, that definitely works there mm -mm, mm -mm. okay that'll be fine as it is um, we really need to get a move on really Okay, cause, because I want to limit the movement for this thing, I don't want his arm, obviously, bending back, sort of... I don't want his arm bending back um, past the point that an elbow could actually bend. We can actually limit this connector. So if we turn on angular limit, you can see that we've got this uh, thing that basically, basically describes um, its movement. And I'm going to leave it at 0 to 180. I think that'll, that'll do us, to be honest. That'll be fine. Okay, so next thing. We've got the left elbow being connected to the left lower arm. And again, it is a hinge. Because it's going to be in the same position. But instead of connecting this to the elbow, it's going to be connecting the elbow to this. So we can actually copy this um, connector again, and we can rename this left elbow to left lower arm. Okay. So now in this, um, we're going to have to drag the left elbow into the top one, the left lower arm into the bottom one. And this should bring that with it now as well. There we go. So it's all connected. So now we're getting there. We're getting something that resembles a dynamic ragdoll. Okay. So left lower arm. We're going to need another connector to connect the left lower arm to the left wrist. And again, I could put a ball and socket there maybe, or maybe a um, ragdoll, but I'm actually just going to copy this. Um, make it a child of the wrist. Go to its coordinates and zero out its position. Um, that'll be fine. Drag it back out again. And we're basically saying, uh, we're going to call this left lower arm. To left wrist and again if we select that and go to the object tab tab we need lower arm to be object a left wrist to be object B now we need to connect the wrist to the left hand and again I think I'm gonna make a copy um, of that hinge it's in exactly the same place to place again so let's Make a copy of that. Let's call it left wrist to left hand. Boom. Okay. And now we need to obviously put the left wrist in there. Object A, left hand object B. Right. We should be in business now. Let's have a look. So. Can't see what's going on there. Yeah, that, that looks all right. Sweet. Okay, so we've got the whole left arm done now, so we can close that down and we can start with the um, the right arm. Now, I know what you're thinking. We could probably copy everything from here that we've already done um, and move it across, but I've found that. Uh, it does some strange things. You'll get, um, like if I press play on this, you'll see that we've got this sort of directional thing for the ball and socket. 
that'll point up and do all kinds of weird things if you make rotations and stuff. So I'm literally just going to start how we did with the left arm. I'm going to do it with the right arm. And I'm going to be as quickly as quickly as I can, quick as I can even, um, because you've already seen me do one arm. So again, I'm just going to whack this up here, and I'm going to call this upper body to right shoulder. Um, we're going to make that a ragdoll, I think. Do 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 do. Excuse me for a moment. Okay. Okay, and we need to um, zero it out to the right shoulder. So let's make that a child of that. Go to the coordinates, zero these out. I'm going to rotate it so it's facing the body like I did with the other one. Holding shift, snap at 90 degrees. Um, I'm also going to make its go to the object tab, make its cone radius 70%, which is what I did with the other one. Um, and then drag it out of this so it's above right shoulder in the hierarchy. So now we need to uh, drag upper body into field A, object A, and the right shoulder into object B. So again, that should be connected now. I'm just going to check because if I, you know, sometimes you can make a mistake, you can forget a step. So I always like to check. Um, so the next one after that is going to be um, exactly the same thing again, but um, we're going to make a copy, dump it under the right shoulder, rename it. So it's right shoulder to upper arm. And obviously in its fields, we're going to need, well, first of all, I want to rotate it the other way. So 180 degrees is the complete opposite. Um, so we're going to need right shoulder and right upper arm. Let's just check that's working. Yep, it's all good. So right upper arm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So right shoulder to right upper arm, and then underneath the uh, right upper arm, we're going to need our um, another connector. So again, I'm going to copy this. Um, so we got that, that, yep. So now we're going to need our right upper arm. There we go, right upper arm to right elbow. Like I said, you don't have to rename these. I just like to do that just to sort of help me, help me keep track. Um, so right upper arm to right elbow. Obviously, it's in the wrong place. So I'm going to put it under the right, uh, make it a child of the right elbow. I'm going to, I'm going to zero out the position of that. Brilliant. And then drag it back out again. Um, go to the object tab. And again, I'm going to make it a hinge. I'm going to rotate it so it's the right way for us at 90 degrees. And also, uh, I'm going to make sure that the right upper arm is in object A and the right elbow is in object B. And I'm also going to uh, turn on the angular limit and make sure it's, uh, I don't know, what is it? Yeah, I think, I think we left it as it was with the other one. So do that again do, 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 do. so we're going to need another copy of this which will be in between right elbow and the right lower arm right elbow right lower arm And it's in exactly the same position. Uh, I might make, tweak that to 190 degrees. Was it that? I don't know. Again, we've got to change the object A to right elbow and right lower arm. That should all be working now. Let's get it in there. Yep. Okay, so, so we're even further along. 
so the next one we're going to need is another hinge and that's right lower arm to right wrist so again we're going to make a copy of this and i'm going to call it right lower arm to right wrist and I need to move it so I'm going to make it a child of the right wrist go to coordinates zero it out again so it's in the right position and then I'm going to pull it back out object A needs to be right lower arm object B needs to be right lower wrist quick test and it's moving with it lovely and we need to do the same thing for the um for the wrist to the hand now so i'm going to again i'm going to take a copy of this and dump it in there rename it to right wrist to right hand um it's already in the right place so we just need to replace the objects object a right wrist object b oh not right wrist uh right hand there we go so now that should be both the arms done now, hopefully. Whee, so it's all connected up. So you can see how this is working now. So I'm going to collapse these up because they're children of the, uh, the upper body. So that's all been sort of sorted out now, really. Um, right, okay, so what we've got here, we've got this thing here. Um, and what's this, the figure? Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm just going to call this. I don't know. I'm going to. I'm going to call this hip joint, something like that. That'll do. And I'm going to just dump this under there for the time being. Or can that be a child of that? I don't know if it should be. Okay, we'll leave. We'll leave that there for now. That'll be fine. I think that that might be better off coming out of there, actually. Mm. Not sure. We'll find out in a minute. Okay. Right. So, is this all connected up? Yeah. Do, 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 do. In fact, let's name our null that contains everything so far. Rag doll because it was just called that so I don't know can we call that that hip joint yeah fine there we go okay so hip joint um, and then we've got this figure thing here I'm going to take out the left and right thighs and I'm going to put this under there as well and I'm going to call this thing what am i going to call this thing um i think i might just leave that as figure actually that'll be all right and then under the figure i'm gonna sort out the legs so the first thing's first then let's let's get the um hip joint sorted um so I think what I'm going to do is use a another connector. I'm going to put the connector as a child of the hip joint, center it out. And the type of connector it's going to be is a ragdoll. I'm going to spin it around so it's facing down uh, 90 degrees. Put a nice little dress on, haven't you? Haven't you? Um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to make the cone radius something like 40. And that connector is going to go between um, well, it's actually going to go between the figure and the hip joint. So it's going to connect these two things together. And I've also forgot about something as well. I need to actually connect this uh, hip joint to the upper body. Um, so we're going to need another connector for that. And 
that, my friend, is going to be... Uh, I think I'm going to use the fixed connector because we don't want this ball rolling around sort of through this, really. So, yeah, okay, I'm going to create another one as well. Simulate dynamics connector. Ooh, did I create one? No. Dynamics connector. And then we're going to put this... Mm. Right, let's close the upper body down. There we go. Right, so all of this stuff here. Sorry, I've got the hierarchy messed up a little bit. Okay, so we want this not as a child of, of the upper body, but sort of underneath it, if you like. Because um, I don't want it to collapse when I close the upper body. The left and right arms are in upper body. We can collapse that, but I want this stuff here exposed. Okay, so this is the connector that I've just created. The type of connector it needs to be is fixed. We also need it to be um, centered to this hip joint. So just center it out there, pull it out. Um, and that connector is gonna be connecting the upper body and the hip joint. Okay, and if we go to our fixed here, also I want to sort out its position a little bit as well. So I actually want to move it to where the upper body and the hip joint kind of meet. Somewhere around there. And then for that, I'm going to go into the uh, object part and make the upper body A and the hip joint B. Okay, so now we should have that hip joint connected to... There we go. It's going a little bit do lally actually, but um, we can sort that out. That'll be fine. Mm, have I got ignore collisions turned on for that? Yep, I have. Upper body, hip joint. That's fine. Okay, so we leave that as that for the time being. Okay, so now we need to connect the hip joint to our figure. And we we've, we've already set that connector up as it needs to be. I've just got to rename it. So hip joint to figure. And it's a ragdoll. We're going to choose hip joint for A and figure for B. Now that should connect that bit at the bottom there. There we go. It's a bit more stable now. We've got more stuff going on. Okay, that's good. And now all we've got to deal with now is the good old legs in it so we need we need to do what we did with the arms okay let's just get through this <laughs> so okay let's take the left one and pull it to the bottom and then just do what we did before drag everything out Okay, we dragged everything out. We've got something hiding in here. Oh no, that's the right. That's the right stuff. So let me just close down the right. There we go. Right, so what we got? We've got the left thigh, left joint. Okay, so that would be what I'm gonna call the left hip. Yeah. I'm just gonna call it hip, that's fine. Left hip. And then we've got the left thigh, which I'm going to leave as that. And then we've got another joint. That's going to be the left knee. And then we've got the left joint there. That's not right, so we'll pull that down. What's this left foot effector? Again, I think it's one of those empty objects. Get rid of that. So what's this? That's the left ankle. Then we got the left foot. Uh, so the shin needs to go between the knee and the ankle. There we go. So that's the right order there. Then I'm going to grab all of that. Alt G to make it grouped and call it left leg. There we go. And then I'm going to make the left leg a child of this figure. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the right leg. Uh, all the right stuff here. I'm just going to drag it all out and organize it a little bit better. 
Okay, so we've got the right thigh, right joint, so that needs to go above it. And this is going to be the right hip. And then we've got the right thigh, that's correct. Right knee, that's next. And then we've got the right joint, but it's not in order. That's actually the right uh, ankle. Then we've got the right foot effector, which is the empty object that we can delete. We've got the right foot, we've got the right shin, so we need the shin, knee, shin, ankle, foot. Right, that's the right order as well. So now we can grab all of that, Alt G it together, and we call that right leg. And then we can dump it there. There we go. So now our, our uh, hierarchy is actually complete now. All we've got to do now is um, set up our uh, connectors. So first things first, let's go with the left. We need to connect our left hip here to this figure object, this, this thing here. Because um, even though they're connected via the hierarchy, um, they're not connected um, in terms of dynamics. So. What we are going to need is a ragdoll joint. So let's go to simulate dynamics connector. I'm going to drag our connector down and make it a child of the left hip because that's where we want it to be. I'm going to go to coordinates, zero out its position. I'm going to drag it above the left hip now and go to its object tab and we're going to choose a ragdoll. We are also going to turn it up and use the shift key to snap to 90 degrees and i'm also going to change its um, cone radius to something like i don't know 25 degrees something like that just so the leg can't move around in too much of a mental way um and now we can rename it as well so this is going to be connecting the figure going top down again figure to the left hip Okay, and obviously we need to drag our figure in as object A, our left hip as object B. Um, now, just to make things nice and quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make a copy of this and drag it between the uh, in front of the right hip so we might as well do both legs at the same time so um, again i'm just going to make this a child of that and uh, zero hour is called coordinates you can see here that uh, what i was talking about with the thing going mental but i'm going to drag it out of that i go into the object tab now figure is obviously correct but it's not the left hip that we want um object b to to be we want it to be the right hip and as you can see, it kind of sorts itself out. So now this should be the same. We should have both of these balls attached to the uh, figure object there. So, yep, there they are spinning around crazily. Looks like a collapsing mannequin. Okay, cool. So I think we're going to do that all the way down, not to do both legs at the same time. Okay, so now we need to connect our these hip joints to our thighs. So again, I think we're going to use the same um, ragdoll. So I'm going to make a copy and dump it in between the left hip and the uh, left thigh. Also, I'm going to rename this one, sorry, because I left it at left when it's actually the right. So, okay, so this one's going to be um, the left hip to the left thigh. Uh, we don't have to move it because it's um, already in the right place. Left hips are right uh, to left thigh. So we just need to change our objects to object A is left hip, left thigh is object B. And we're going to do the same thing for the right hip. Um, although we do need this to be pointing in the opposite direction this time. So again, I'm just going to um, sh shift drag. So it's 180 degrees. So it's facing the other direction. 
And I'm just going to do the same thing for this one. So this is uh, between the figure and the right hip. I'm just going to make a copy. Um, change its direction. So it's flipped. Change its name as well. So it's right hip to right thigh. So now this um, needs the right hip as object A and the right thigh as object B. So now we should have our thighs attached for both legs as well. We don't look very happy. Why are you doing this? Eh? Yep, cool. Right, next. So the next uh, thing we're going to do uh, is our knee. Now, this one I'm going to do a little bit differently. Um, again, you don't want your knee bending in the wrong direction. Um, I'm just going to take a drink. And a puff. So again, uh, for this I'm going to use a hinge. So simulate tag, dynamics, connector. Um, I'm going to drag this connector all the way down uh, to our left knee and make it a child of that. I'm going to zero it out on the position and also I'm going to turn it and shift so it's 90 degrees to the knee. There we go. That looks about right to me. Then I'm going to drag that out. So this one is going to be, um, let's see, so this is going to be left thigh to left knee. Um, and in the objects, we're going to have left thigh is object A, left knee is object B. And again, I'm going to turn on the angular limit and um, well, that's pretty much set up. So this is where it can travel kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Minus 27 maybe. Because so we don't want the leg going too far. Um, 183. Ooh. I don't know what I did there. Oh, yeah. to 183 per look. There we go. I didn't type it correctly. Okay, something like that. That'll do. And again, I'm going to make a copy and take it down to the right knee. Zero out its coordinates. Um, and then pull it out. I'm going to call this right thigh to right knee and obviously we want to change the object as well so it's the right thigh and the right knee okay now is that going absolutely ballistic um, do, 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 do. hmm uh, it seems right, but it seems like it is turned the other way. That's why. So let's get that 180 degrees. Yeah, that looks good to me. Um, let's just check the other one. Let's just check the knees are connected. Bang. Yeah, we got our knees connected. Sweet. Okay. So sorry about the uh, length this is taking, guys, but I didn't want to cut anything out. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, again, the next thing we're going to do is connect our, our knees to our shins. And again, I'm going to use the um, hinge. So I'm going to copy our left uh, thigh to left knee connector and put it in between left knee. And I'm going to call it left knee to left shin. Okay, and the amount of movement on it I want on it is, I don't know, let's make this 19 to 
265, something like that. But that is not going to be what I want, is it? So look. There's going to be more. Okay, so it's movement. I'm going to want more like this, really. So yeah, something like that, that'll do. Okay. And we're going to do the same with the right leg. I'm going to copy, uh, before I do that, let's get the left knee. Ooh, shit, okay, so. Yeah, so it's the left knee, object A, and left shin, object B. And in the right one, this is the right thigh to the right knee. We'll make a copy, put it in between the right knee and the shin. And we're going to call this the right knee to the right shin. So this is our copy. Okay, and again, we want to restrict its movement so it's something a little bit more sensible. Um, in fact, I think I just... Let's see what the left one's like. <laughs> it's flipped again. Brilliant. Okay. Let me just sort this out. So I think I was right the first time, weren't I? 19. Yeah. It's about 100 and... No, 265. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, it's gonna. The reason it flipped is because I changed what the objects were, and it's relative to their rotation and all that kind of stuff. So really, I should have set on the objects first. So okay, we've got our right knee um, to right shin. So let's make it right knee object A to right shin, and then we can actually make a um, proper. What was that? 19 to 265. So let's make this 19 to 265. And I should imagine that needs to be the other way, doesn't it? So minus. Well, let's just eyeball it. <laughs> so I think it was something along the lines of that. Okay, so maybe it's that to that. Yes, okay, so that's it. Something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll find out sooner or later. Okay, so that's our, our shins to our knees. Right knee to right shin, left knee to left shin. Let's see if that actually works. Yes, we've got our shins working. He hasn't got any feet though, has he, love? Also, the friction on that floor is not very high, so I'm just going to go up to the floor's um, dynamics tag, and I'm going to say that the friction on it is about 75%, something like that. So maybe it'll be a bit more... Yeah, there we go. More like a floor. Boom. Sweet. Okay, so let's get this rolling again. So the... So now we need to connect our shins to our ankles so this again is going to be um i think i'm going to go for a ragdoll uh, connector so what i can do is i can nick that from our left hip and drag it into our ankle i'm just going to close this up so i don't get confused go to all coordinates zero it out and we're going to rename, uh, well, first of all, we're going to drag this out and we're going to name it left shin. So we've already got the left there. Left shin to uh, left ankle. And then we're going to make our cone radius. Do, 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 do. 
Nope, we need to drag our left shin in object A, left ankle in object B. And we're going to do the same thing for the right leg. So I'm going to close up the left, grab the right, copy the right hip and drag it in our right ankle. Zero out the position again. And we're also going to rename it. Um, right shin. There we go. To right ankle. Take it out. Go to the object. Right shin. Right ankle. So that should be both of them now. I just wanted to check that I've named them correctly. So that's left shin to left ankle and right shin to right ankle. So our ankle should be included in there now. Okay. So the next one down, we've got, um, again, I'm going to use a hinge again. And this is going to be connecting the ankles to the feet. Um, so as I did before, I'm going to grab the last shin I used, which would have been the the knee. I'm going to drag that out and again I'm going to make that a child of the ankle. Zero out its position. And uh, drag it out. And this is going to be the... Uh, what is this going to be? Well, I got this in the wrong place. So we've got the left shin connected to the left ankle. Yes. So this is actually going to be the ankle and the foot. So this is going to be the left ankle to the left foot. And again, I won't adjust the um, limits on it until I've got my objects in because we won't know where they're going to be. Left ankle, left foot. Brilliant. Okay, so now at least we've got our um, stuff attached here. And uh, okay, so our limit is going to be 119, something like that, to 150. Yeah, so it can't go too far. That seems fair to me. Um, so left ankle and left foot. So that's that connected. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same thing with the right leg. So we need to copy our hinge from our knee all the way down to the ankle. Um, we're going to zero that out. Um, drag it out. And we're going to say that this is the right ankle to right foot. Okay, and again, we're going to drag our right ankle and our right foot in, and again, um, let's make some adjustments, which is going to be, uh, what was my other settings? Duh, 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 duh. I can't even remember now. I think it was something like a 119 to... 150 something like that or will that be minus 150 because it's the other way uh, what was the left one let's have a look minus 119 to 150 okay of course it's flipped the other way isn't it so Let's just have a look at this. So that's going to be around there to around something like that. That should do us 31 to 308. Yeah, whatever. Um, they're all connected. Let's test. Yes, they are all connected. So that's great. We've got all this hooked up dynamically just with one dynamics tag which is set apply tag to children. Um, actually, uh, I'm going to stop that and let it 
go back to the beginning. I'm going to turn that off. See what happens. Yeah, it just falls. What if we turn this to all? No, okay. Second level. Now, I wonder if it's because the ragdoll actually needs me moving up above the floor a little bit more. No, okay, so maybe it does need that then. All right. So moving mesh off. What's this top level actually? No. Okay, so off. Uh, apply tag to children. Yeah, that seems to work a treat. So now we've got our rag doll, which looks pretty messed up to be honest. Uh, <laughs> we can um, we can actually do some stuff to it. So I don't want to take too much longer because we've actually got the rig set up now. But um, okay, let's let's do one more thing. Let's grab a box. Okay, um, and let's make it a hundred centimeters by a hundred centimeters, hundred centimeters. So that's a meter squared. So you can see that our actual rag doll um, is a little bit out of proportion there, but for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so I've got this box here, and let's just make a quick material for it. I'm just gonna. Take reflection off, make its color something we can see clearly against, and make it. There we go. And let's make another one for our ragdoll. And uh, let's get rid of the default specular, make a GGX. Uh, it's not because I'm rendering; it's just that you can see a little bit of the reflection in the um, in the viewport. Uh, let's make its color something very bright, like red. That'll do us, and let's give that to our ragdoll. There we go, and you can see that specular there that I was on about. Um, and okay, so our cube that we've got here, I've just sort of made a step with it very quickly. Um, and I'm going to go to the MoGraph menu and create a cloner, drop the cube in the cloner, and then I'm going to select my cloner and it's offset in the Y direction you can affect like this. So I'm just going to offset it so it's something like this. And then I'm going to offset it in the Z direction so it's something like this. So we can create some stairs. So now we can um, up the count. So we get a flight of stairs like this. I can grab the cloner so it's not... There we go. So that's better. And the nice thing about putting my ragdoll in, uh, in this null is now that I can pick up the whole lot and move it anywhere I like um, as a starting off point. Let's give this cloner some more stairs. Um, let's go into this view just so I can get, there he is, there he is. Now for the uh, ragdoll to collide with these stairs I'm going to, um, uh, well he, he won't at this point if I just press play he's going to go straight through him. And it's because the cloner needs to have a rigid body on it as well. But if I put a rigid body on the cloner, the stairs will fall as well. I don't want that. So I'm going to go to simulation collider body. And also, it's a collider body and it kind of doesn't work. It, well, you can see it going a bit mental there. And it's because the... First of all, I need to go to the collision tag. Uh, go to the dynamics tag on the cloner. Go to collision. And this inherit tag drop down and make compound collision shape so all these clones together will make one compound object uh, its collision mesh will be um, created from all of these clones so they're not treated as separate objects so we first of all we want that individual elements we don't want that um, but the shape we've again it's set to automatic so it will try and optimize the collision shape so what will happen is instead of having this you can see where the step goes down here and then back out again. It will try and be as efficient as possible and actually connect this and this here. So you'll have this slope, which isn't what we want. I mean, you can we might be able to see it actually if I press play. Oh no, it actually didn't do what it was meant to do. Very strange. But um, 
we don't need to make it a moving mesh. We need to make it a static mesh because it's not, the stairs aren't actually moving anywhere. There we go. And there you have it. So now we can, uh, let's take off our shading. And there he goes. Off he goes on his little journey. We're getting a bit of frame slow. Oh, we haven't got enough frames. Let's uh, crank that up then. So off he goes on his journey down the stairs. Yeah, why? There we go. And obviously you can see we've got some frame slow down there where he's having to make those calculations. But that's how you set up a uh, ragdoll using dynamic connectors. In fact, I've got a scene that I did earlier. Here we go. Same, same thing, same setup. But... Uh, I've uh, baked the dynamics and I've even got a camera following him down and obviously you can see that the frame slow down isn't bad anymore because I, I baked it all. And there you go. There's your dynamic ragdoll. Um, so yeah, I realized that was a bit of a long one, but um, so there you go. There's the uh, the ball and joint. Uh, connector and the uh, ragdoll connector which are basically the same thing one's just got a limit on it um, so as always check out the digital meat website you can find me on facebook and twitter also if you'd like to help keep the digital meat site running um, check out my patreon page and the merchandise store and the donate button on the on uh, the website i'll put links to all of those things in the uh, description of the video Thanks for watching yet again, guys. Um, that's it. Bye.